Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the something is so delightful. Since we no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. <laughs> That's not gonna be the opening. We're not doing that. <laughs> What's going on everybody? It's your boy Will and happy holidays to one and all. And I'm here to give my spoiler review for Hawkeye episode 6, our finale. That's not the name of the episode, but I'm just, I'm running with it. We're just going to run with it. So this is, we're concluding our Hawkeye series, which doesn't seem to be getting a season 2 based off of the way the episode kind of turned out. It was a nice little 6 episode miniseries that kind of gave us a more in-depth look at Clint Barton and introduced a wonderful character in Kate Bishop. Like all, this is a spoiler review, <laughs> I said it at the beginning, but just if you're new to this, like all episode reviews, they are going to be spoilers, so I'm going to talk about some of the spoilery stuff, some of the people that premiered in this episode, and just overall, just talk about the episode. So if you haven't watched the episode yet, I appreciate it if you pause the video, go watch it, and then come back and hear my overall thoughts on it. And as always, if you are new to this channel, hi, how's it going? My name's Will, like I said at the beginning. And I do movie reviews, trailer reactions, a whole bunch of fun stuff. If you're, if that's your bag, why not subscribe to the channel? I'm trying to get to 400 by the end of the year. I don't know if I'm going to hit it, but if you give me, if you give me a subscription, that'd be great, and I'd be your best friend. <laughs> Yeah. Also, quick shout out to the Movie Bears podcast, Brad, Jim, and Will. I was I was invited on to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home uh, this past week, and it was such a blast. I've been a fan of those guys for a number of years, and they do awesome stuff on their channel. They talk about movies, and they're just big geeks as well. And they just, they just love movies, and they're three very good-looking guys who are super sweet and I'm so thankful that they invited me on, especially during their nine year anniversary. That was crazy. So I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you guys for having me on. Go watch the episode of the podcast. We geeked out over Spider-Man and we had some really, a really good discussion about the movie as well. So the link for that video is in the description below. So please go check that out and also subscribe to their channel and their podcast. They do awesome work. They're great guys. So. Let's jump into the review. All right, so this is our finale of Hawkeye. We've been on this journey with Clinton and Kate trying to, to, to figure out what this, you know, the underbelly of New York with the tracksuit mafia. And this episode is just full of reveals. We finally get Wilson Fisk, AKA the Kingpin, played by Vincent D'Onofrio in the episode in full. And he's just as menacing and just as towering as he was in the Netflix series. This is obviously a different version than the Netflix one. There's no reference to past exploits. They just kind of go right in with his relationship with Eleanor, with Kate's mom, and how she was the one who killed Armand and framed Jack for the murder. So, apologies to Jack. You were just a boob. Charming and goofy boob, but you were a boob nonetheless. So, apologies for saying that you were the bad guy of the series. She decides to, to leave the entire business, basically because Kate's gotten super duper close. And it just, it sends Kingpin off not in a good way. Uh, we also get Maya coming back in this episode as well after her confrontation with Clint and realizing the truth of her father's assassination, basically at the behest of Kingpin. And she basically subtly turns on them, but it's left ambiguous at first until both Kazi and Kingpin basically confirm that she is against them now. And she ends up leaving, but she comes back towards the end of the episode to have a confrontation. Unfortunately, a fatal confrontation with Kazi, who does not make it out of the episode, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, Kate's also kind of dealing with the fallout of the revelation that her mother is a bad guy, pretty much. Um, which Clint, in, at this point in time, has fully accepted the mentorship role with Kate and helps her calm down and helps her focus on what they have to do tonight with this party and to try to stop the tracksuit, stop her mom and save her mom from Kingpin, basically, um, with the wild card being Yelena 
in the wings. She's basically the one that tipped off Kate and Clint about her mom and that her mom is the one that hired her to kill Clint, even though she wants to kill Clint regardless because of what she feels was done to Nat. That all leads to their inevitable confrontation at, towards the end of the episode. And it ends kind of the way I thought it was. It, there was going to be a scuffle. Um, Yelena wasn't listening to what Clint said because Clint even says when they're having their showdown, like, you're not going to believe me if I tell you the full story. Just know it was her sacrifice. I tried to stop her and it was her choice and I'm sorry. And of course she's not hearing it. And Clint gets his ass beat, but he's able to get through to her by basically doing the same whistle call that her and Nat used to do when they were kids. And that just gave him enough time to allow them both to share the pain of losing someone super close to them. I mean, unfortunately, Yelena even says that you spent more time with Nat than I did. And that's always going to kind of probably eat up at her, at her. But Clint even tells him, like, she's gone. We have to find a way to live on without her basically and it, it was a really cool moment a really cool moment between the two of them and I'm, I'm glad it didn't end with him taking a bullet through the chest the series has done such a great job bringing clint barton to the limelight and giving jeremy renner a chance to really stretch his acting chops in the series with this character because of all the avengers he hasn't had the most time to really perform at the level that I felt, I feel like he was meant to be at. I mean, everybody else had their moments, had their movies, had their times to grow, but Clint never really got that. Um, and I'm, I'm so happy how the series has turned out because it not only gives general moviegoing audiences or even comic book fans, especially ones who have loved Hawkeye's character, a chance to be proud of what they put on screen because. I've been so happy with how they've handled Clint Barton and even his relationship with Kate Bishop have been the driving force of the entire series. Um, Kate as a character has grown from just an obsessed fan to being a true hero and probably accepting the mantle of Hawkeye based off of how the last few moments of the episode turned out. And she is super capable as well. She went toe to toe with Yelena trying to stop her or stall her long enough that she didn't immediately kill Clint when she got the chance which is the best possible outcome. But even that moment, their banter, their chemistry together, uh, Haley Steinfeld and Florence Pugh are great. And I would love to see them in a movie together or even a season two, if they do a season two where, where Kate is more of the focus than Clint is and Clint's just more of a background character. And Yelena's like, they do like this weird good cop, bad cop, like the buddy cop thing. I would love that if they decided to do a season two, which they didn't necessarily say anything at the end of the episode, if we are getting a season two or not. We got to see the return of the LARPers and they were kind of team Hawkeye in this episode. They were helping out Clint and Kate when they were trying to scope out the party and they were undercover. And that's when we got them getting the hand off of their suits and all the, the load of trick arrows that that they made together, which was such a fun scene. We also get confirmation that Scott is the one, Scott Lang is the one that gave Pym Particles to Hawkeye because he had that blue arrow in episode three, which I was like tripping balls about. No, episode three or episode four? Episode three, where he had the enlarging arrow. And in this one, he had a shrinking arrow because you could tell based off of the color of the arrow. Don't know what happened to the guys in the truck. They might be dead <laughs> because when he fires the arrow at the truck, when it's careening off of the side of, I want to say it's Rockefeller Center where the big tree is and the ice skating rink is, when it's careening off the side, Kate shoots the truck with the pin arrow and it shrinks it down and you hear the guys inside and even Kate's like, what do we do now? And, and he's like, I don't know. I'm going to have to call Scott about that. <laughs> and next thing you know, an owl swoops in and takes the truck away with the guys inside. So they're probably dead. I'm just guessing, they might, may or may not be. The finale did exactly what it needed to do. It had all of our different elements converging onto Rockefeller Center and that really cool fight sequence that you see between the tracksuits and Clint and Kate and they're using all the trick arrows that they made. We get the unfortunate deadly confrontation between Echo and Kazi. 
where she just wants him to leave with them, just as, you know, leave the life behind and just come with them. But he's like, this is my life. I can't be anything else. And ends up getting fatally wounded. As um, Kate's mom's trying to escape because she's obviously the target of the tracksuits and Kingpin's wrath, Kate goes after her and runs into Kingpin. And we get this really kind of surprisingly well choreographed showdown between Kingpin and Kate Bishop. And Kate can hold her own. And it's very surprising she held her own. But let's take a second just to talk about what kind of a fucking tank Kingpin was in this episode. I mean, the man gets hit by a car and shrugs it off like it's nothing. Rips a door off the hand with nothing. He's definitely going to be back. Regardless of how the little encounter between him and Echo went towards the end where there is a gunshot, but it is off-camera gunshot. And no, you know, when you don't see a body, you can pretty sure guess that someone's not dead. But, I mean, they, they make Kingpin the tank that he's always been kind of presented to in the comics. Obviously, Daredevil, from what I remember, it, I don't think he went that hard. Like, he didn't even take a, he didn't take a, a car to the chest and just shrug this shit off like it's nothing. Two arrows to the chest as well. But yeah, Kate was able to hold her own. She was even able to do the little trick that Clint had taught her with the flinging something. So she flung his, um, his cufflink at a bunch of the arrows because he had broke the arrows in half. And, and they all went off together. And it's a really cool scene. It's actually it's actually dope. It's it for me it, it kind of makes Kate de facto leader if they do Young Avengers because she's definitely the most experienced out of all the Young Avengers that we've seen so far. I mean, obviously Wiccan and Speed have superpower, but Kate herself has experience and training, unlike I think anybody else that we've seen so far. If they do eventually lead to Young Avengers and Kate Bishop is the lead of it. It would make the most sense. She seems the most mature out of everybody. And that's something I would definitely pay to see. Um, the episode does conclude with the arrest of Eleanor Bishop because of the death of Armand. And um, Kate's the one who basically ratted out her mother. And that leaves the door open for whatever sort of confrontation that might lead. She, she still loves her mom. She even said, I love you, mom. But Kate had to learn the hard truths that Clint was talking about at the beginning of the episode. It's a lonely life. You have to make sacrifices as a hero. And this was definitely Kate's sacrifice. She doesn't have her family anymore. Her dad is gone and her mom's in prison or going to prison. The episode does conclude basically with Clint making it home for fucking Christmas on Christmas Day. Which, there's no other way I feel like this series could have ended if he didn't make it home. So I'm glad he did. It was a very heartfelt scene. He brought Kate. He brought Lucky. And, you know, just say I brought a couple strays, which makes total sense. And we finally get confirmation of who's freaking watch that is and it is of course Clint's wife's watch which gives us confirmation that Laura was a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. What character was she? I'm going to assume she was a version of Mockingbird even though we had Mockingbird on the Agents of Seals, S.H.I.E.L.D. series uh, but in the comics Mockingbird and Hawkeye were like an item so it kind of makes sorry than that floating around. It kind of makes the most sense that, that um, she would be like a version of Mockingbird and and also gives a little bit more context to why Nick Fury would hide Hawkeye's family out just out of the goodness of his heart. No, because, I mean, maybe out of the goodness of heart. I shouldn't assume Nick Fury is an asshole or anything like that. I mean, he is, but it's, you know, Sam Jackson, what are you going to do? But it, it just kind of give, it gives more context to Age of Ultron <laughs> again. God, making that movie worth something. Good for you. Good for you, Marvel. Making your weakest Avengers movie worth something now. Um, that's pretty much where the episode ends. And we do have a post credit scene for the episode where it is... Um, <sighs> where does this rank on post credit scene? I gotta be real with you. I don't know. It, it has nothing of any sort of mention of the future. If we're going to get season two of Hawkeye, no stinger that's going to leave the fans clamoring for more information. No, it, they, they played the full musical sequence for, um, what is it called? Save the City from the Rogers musical, where, you know, I can do this all day, that song. That's what it was. It was funny. And it's nice to see the whole performance. Because the performance is kind, it's kind of, it, it looks like a lot of fun. Albeit super fucking cheesy, but it does look like a lot of fun. So this episode was chalked with reveals, with closure, 
with conclusion, with heartache. It had everything. It was a good finale. And it, it wrapped up the series very nicely. And overall, I really liked the Hawkeye series. I think it was a really... I didn't expect this to be probably my favorite, but this kind of was my favorite. Just the banter and the way Jeremy Renner and Haley Seinfeld work together as a unit. They're fantastic. Their chemistry is off the chart. I love seeing Hawkeye be Hawkeye. Another opportunity for Jer Jeremy Renner just to kind of explore the character even more. I don't want to necessarily see him go away now. Like, I never did. But I don't want to see him go away. I, even if Kate Bishop takes the Hawkeye mantle, which they kind of alluded to at the end that she was going to take the mantle, uh, I don't want him to necessarily disappear. I mean, he deserves retirement. For fuck's sake, the man deserves retirement. But I don't want to see him go away. And that's a good thing. I'm a little upset that my theory from Hawkeye episode 5 didn't pan out. That we didn't get a little tease from anything from Spider-Man No Way Home. Because they both take place about, about the same time. They, sorry. Here we go. I'm a little bummed that we didn't get a little like cross synergy between Spider-Man No Way Home and the finale. Just because they take place about the same time. But based off of where, how that movie ends, it kind of makes sense that... There wouldn't be any real recollection of certain things. If you want to know, watch my non-spoiler review and my spoiler review should be up. Those are just my general thoughts of the finale, the things in the finale that I really like. I hope we see Kingpin again. This really sets up Echo for her solo series. I'm glad the beef that Yelena has for Clint has been squashed. And I'll be interested to see where she shows up again because, again, I love the chemistry between Yelena and Kate. I think it's fantastic. And I think it kind of teases a, a weird a sort of partnership very similar to what Nat and Clint had. I think that would work really well. I'm wondering if we'll ever get a reveal of who Laura Barton is. Is she a mockingbird or is she just a random S.H.I.E.L.D. agent? But if the watch was that important... I feel like she's a little bit more important than just a random S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. I still don't care about the kids. I'm sorry. They're just background fodder. <laughs> They're just background fodder. Um, I, I don't. Oh, and they burned the Ronin outfit, so Ronan's done, so kudos. Those are just my general thoughts on the finale. Um, I'm sure I missed something from the finale. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching this and all my videos. I really do appreciate it. If you are new to the channel, hopefully you subscribe to the channel. Um, it would really make my day and hopefully I made yours as well. I've got a ton of videos on this channel right now. I've got like over 200. Some are, are better quality than the others. I will say that, um, especially if you go back like two years. So, Hopefully the evolution has been good. I'm continuing to evolve. I am planning on recording a few things over the Christmas holiday. Maybe not Christmas theme, but definitely things I've been wanting to do. Uh, I don't know about Book of Boba Fett. Keep an eye on the channel. If you see an episode one review, then I'm doing reviews for the episodes. I might just do an overall season review for Book of Boba Fett this time. Um, just because there's other things I do want to try to record and try to do. So keep an eye out. Subscribe to the channel. Really help me out. 20 more subscribers and I hit 400. And I couldn't get there without you. So help your brother out. And also check out the Movie Bears podcast. Link is in the description below for the episode that I was so thankfully invited on to be a part of it was so much fun hopefully i get to do it again those guys are awesome subscribe to their channel as well that would be dope they're really great guys and i had such a blast so thank you if you guys are watching this <laughs> thank you so much for letting me come on and be geeky with you and just talk about movies and the stuff that we love and you're all very hot. So um, you can follow me on all the social media that is listed at the end of this video. Um, like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And as always, until next time, I will catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you did like this video, why not give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends? You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on my gorgeous little face right over there. You can follow me on all the various social media platforms right below. And last but certainly not least, if you've got a few extra minutes, why not check out one of the lovely videos floating right over here. Later.